GUNTERBOTS! Hello and welcome to GUNTERBOTS. I am Walter. Let's get busy. Today we are going to learn about programming the M5 stack, which is this really awesome little controller that comes in a case with a battery, a bunch of sensors we'll talk about, and I'll show you how to program that with their environment, which is called UI Flow, which looks a lot like Blockly programming, if you've seen that before, and a little bit of Python when you get really good at it. So in the meantime, we will start with this. So I've got to help you download some software and get your computer set up so that you can move on and start doing the programming. I use Firefox, uh, you can use Chrome, I think it works on any of those. So go to m5stack.com and there's a bunch of different information that talks about M5 Stack and their projects uh, that you can do with it and also some of their products. There's a whole bunch, we're not gonna focus on that. Right now we're gonna get right to work. So go over to the support, which I'm blocking with my great video. I'll move it out of the way. So go to support right here and then there's a download button. And it'll take you to the web page that shows you what you need to download. So there are really only the one you need is the UI flow, but on initial setup, you're going to need this CP210X driver. And again, as you can see, it works on all three types of machines, Windows, Mac, and Linux. The driver is key. Uh, I'm going to show you setting up Windows, and then we'll have another video to show the Mac. And then we have a Linux setup too. M5 Burner, which is the software used to actually... Um, you can change the kind of software that runs in here as you program it and set it up for our interface. There is a UI flow um, program that we want to install with this. So let's make sure we find that too. And that's what we're going to put on there. And then the UI flow desktop IDE, which is what we're here for today. Um, we'll just download those. You can just save them right to your de to uh, anywhere you want to save them. I save them in a downloads folder. Uh, where you save them is not important. What's important is knowing how to get to them once we've saved them. So let's save them. And then the driver. And it's going to take them a second to kind of load in the background. Basically, we'll do the driver first. And then as a Windows install, let's go ahead and click on it here. It'll obviously pop up the um, admin or the user control, which I, you probably can't see right now. And then it'll ask you to do the install. Let me show you the window and what it looks like. All right, so in this folder, you have an application called UI Flow Desktop IDE. Go ahead and click on that, and that should launch your software. All right, I will need to turn on my, connect my device. Before we get too far though, we need to do a setup. So when you get your when software installs right, or when you're done with your upload, you should get sort of a screen like that. Well, we have to push the red button on the side, which is the power button once. And as soon as the screen comes up, it's gonna have some three options on the bottom. You wanna be quick and hit the setup, which is on the right side. So as soon as it comes up, you wanna be able to hit setup. And there's five, there's switch to internet mode, switch to USB mode. Switch to USB mode by moving the arrow down, then click select. And that puts it in USB mode with a QR code and a key kind of on it. Yours will be a little different, but same idea. And then let's plug it back in. Oh, connected. Yay! Cables are important, it appears. So, welcome to M5 Flow or the UI Flow Desktop IDE. Transition it to here. And as you can see, we are connected. So, this is the basic layout um, yours should look like. The biggest thing to focus on is UI flow in the top left of your screen. Here we go, yep, there's the mouse. So UI flow version 1.3.2, and then this is the prod, just says it's a project, and here, this is kind of like gonna be the name of your project. We'll call it our Hello World project. So that when we save it for later, we are good. Um, move over to the right a little bit. You'll notice this Blockly and Python. We're, you can switch back and forth between... Let's see if that works there. Okay, Blockly and Python. We will spend most of our time right now in Blockly, but ultimately we can move up to do advanced things in Python, which is pretty cool. 
and then we can come over here and it has just basically notes about the software and then forum which is where you can go and ask questions if you have any problems docs just gives you documentation explaining different things about it different parts of the software and some of the programming blocks this is these are examples which are great to start from we'll use some of those here's your undo and your redo button and you have a manager which basically is if it shows up yeah you can add images in here and additional blockly pictures and stuff but this is like if we want to put images on our screen we would drop them here in addition, this is the, looks like a play button or run, but basically it's how the software gets onto your M5 stack. And over here you have the uh, options to open an existing or saved project you've done before. Save this one, download it, um, update the record or change the settings, which takes us back to when we first set up the software. So as you can see, it's pretty awesome. And on the left is a representation of the M5 stack. Your color may not match, but that the important thing is the layout and the button. So button one, button two, button three. Up here, we have some options for what the, what's a title, what's a label, rectangle, circle, and image. And if you click on the background, you can change the color, you know, all sorts of cool things. Let's try to make a, maybe pick a, like a greeny blue or something. Pick a color over there, it changes the background on the programming environment, and then if you were to press run, you've now programmed your device. Very cool. Let's start with the title, but the title is kind of the quickest one. Drop it on the screen, and kind of like the background, if you click on it, it'll pop up a little window to give you information about the title. Uh, name, you can call it whatever you want, but this is how, whatever you put it here is what it will be called in the software. Um, so if, let me show, you dropped title here. Um, and then we have a couple of things, things, little uh, areas, categories over here. One is event, one is UI, one is the hardware, one is the units, and one is the modules. Um, if you notice under UI, that there's something called title. And if we go back here and we look at the name of title, it's called title one. And if we go under here in title, we see that it is also showing title one. Kind of cool. We'll drop it on the screen. Uh, let's just go real quick here and change the, the title one, change the color. Well, I'll just leave it where it is for now. Uh, but you can change the color to whatever you want, and then we'll say OK. Uh, the text offset, and then here's the title. Hello, title. And you can't do spaces, uh, and then you have a layer. So now, on the UI, on the programming environment, you can see that it says hello, title. But on the screen of the actual device, you don't see anything, right? Well, if we do play again, just like we did with the background, you'll notice that now we've changed the title to match what was on your screen, and then it said executed successfully at the top, and we can change that however we want. So if we can change this to say, instead of saying title, we can say first title, right? And then press play. You'll notice that it now says first title. Doesn't match what's on here. That's not really... This is just sort of to give you an idea of what the what it, the layout will look like. And if you haven't changed it, it'll be whatever you put here. Once we drop a block on the screen, we're going to overwrite whatever we've had on this screen. And what's here will actually appear on the device. Very cool. Let's do a label. Label 1. And we'll just call it like... Same thing. Uh, sorry. Click on here. On the actual text for the label. And it says again, Label 1. It gives you the X and Y position. Uh, that's significant because a screen is a certain depth, and it's labeled in pixels, basically. So if we have our text up here in the upper left, we'll see that it's really close. And, of course, it's a minus 2, which means it probably won't appear on the screen. But x is 3, y is 0. We can probably just type 0, 0 in there, and then it'll move. But if we drop it here, you can kind of see where it goes. You don't have to guess. You can put it where you want it and see kind of the numbers. Uh, let's change it to first label and let's change it to a fun font there's a few fonts like five or uh, six or seven you can pick from let's pick a uh, comic because that's always a fun one to look at and we'll leave the color in white and then let's just get this out of the way let's press the run button and see that it deployed to our device so now we have written a label to our screen and this is obviously only going to do it one time uh, that's fine we have rectangles so we can drop a rectangle on the screen like this drop this rectangle on the screen we can drop a circle on the screen, right? We can put a little image on the screen. So all of this can happen here. And if we click on, let's do, uh, let's say error, 
or default what's default i'll leave the that'll maybe that'll say stay anyway that'll stay so we have a label um let's move this kind of down so we can put something next to the label so that's awesome but now i want to do something with that so we have the square or rectangle which is called rectangle one and the x position of 70 and y position of 108 and you can pick the lit the width and the height as well as what do you want to be around the like if you want to give it a border so it kind of stands out a little more let's say okay at the bottom here and then of course we have these layers and the layers are just sort of like think of like a sandwich and then we have let's do this guy here but notice his x is 171 obviously to the right a little more but he's a little high like a 106 so let's kind of see if we can line this up He's at uh, 108 is his Y. So let's go here and say 108. And notice that it, again, I'll remind, remind you, 0, 0 is here. So going down will increment the number to in the Y position. And going to the right will increment the number in the X position. And if you pull them down this diagonally, then obviously both will increment higher, which is kind of awesome. And let's see if we can figure this one out. So let's put him in the middle. Let's just try to eyeball this guy in the middle here. All right, cool. Now we have an amazing UI. Let's deploy it because we like to see it on our screen. Yay! And if you want, let's just change this default so you can prove I can prove to you that that actually worked. And then again, press run. Yay! Very cool. Um, one thing that I think would be awesome is let's we've already changed the title to say first title. Let's drop a label up on here, and label gives you a bunch, actually a couple more options under title. You can give it a name, show it or hide it, change the color. Uh, so let's say we want to change the color of the title. Let's make it red. You probably won't see it on the screen, but the the words did change. And we can go to title, and we can drop a back. Not the title color. Let's get rid of that. Trash that bad boy. See down here? And label, uh, title background color right here. Obviously, if we make it the same color, it's not going to be a good idea. So let's change it to something different enough to make it stand out. And you can see, oh, you can see the green on there even. Uh, you can see that it changed that as well. We have the label, so let's take the label and see what other options are there. We can move the label. You cannot move the title, but you can move labels. So if the label is, let's say, right now at X1, Y39, let's say we just wanted to move it to the right a little bit for fun. So let's say we want to move it to X10, and we don't even mess with the Y. And let's press play. Whoop. See, it moved over a little bit. Pretty awesome. We also have a color change. Uh, you can do the RGB color, which this is a number from 0 to 255, which is an 8-bit number. Uh, if you pick a range of R, uh, red and green and blue colors, just like a color palette, you can generate a color that changes. The font can change for here, too. So let's drop it on for the label. Let's change the font to something that sticks out a little bit, like Deja Vu 24. And let's press play. Boom. Pretty awesome. Now we have rectangles, they do the same thing. So one other thing, oh yeah, the hide and the show, and you can even rotate the label from here. Rectangle, it's gonna have a few options as well. Uh, you can change the width of it, the height of it, make it bigger or smaller. So let's say we deploy it big, but I wanna make it like 10, 10, make it really small, kind of like you're closing your eye. Cheek. Now I got really, really tiny eyes. Maybe we go to 20, that was a really small. See so if we can get that to show up. Here we go. Boom. Yay. Something here is we've done. This is your first program. Congratulations. You have just programmed an embedded controller. Yay. Good work. But um, the thing to point out here is this is made possible and because of the setup you do over here. Using the word setup, anything you connect under the word setup will happen one time and one time only. Type a little bit. Grab a timer. and We'll just uh, wait a timer in here for a minute. Let's just say we'll wait five seconds. Then I want to turn, I want to hide the title. Hide the title. And the label, I want to move the label again. Let's move it over, uh, let's, I don't know, 25, 24, 10. All right, and then when we deploy this, watch this. So now we're going to see it set up a certain way. And then after a few seconds, we're going to hide the title and the label moves. All right, congratulations. You have just finished your first program. Very proud of you. Good work. We have a lot more to learn and cover, but I wanted to get you set up and running as fast as possible. This is the quickest way, and then we'll just jump in our next tutorials into doing more fun and more advanced stuff. Thanks again, and let's keep making.